This time of year has become synonymous with the king of clay. Sweeping aside all challenges to claim title after title. Following a lengthy layoff came a special return. Last month in Indian Wells, he claimed his 22nd ATP World Tour Masters 1000 title. Rafa was back. Obviously played some, some great tennis, but you expect nothing less from him. He's one of the best players that's ever played the game. It's maybe started playing at his best level a little bit faster than expected, but um, you know it wasn't going to take him too long. If one person can to do something like uh, like did Rafael, it's him, no? I think Rafael, uh, he's an amazing player, and I'm very glad for, for him for, for his uh, comeback playing very good. Gunning for a staggering ninth consecutive title in the Principality, Nadal has always felt at home in Monte Carlo. Always was very special for me Monte Carlo. No? It's a special place, it's a tournament with a lot of history. It's a tournament that I, I watch um, the best player of the world winning there in the, when I was a kid. And I always have a special feeling with Monte Carlo. No? And since the first time that I played there, I think it was in 2003, I loved the place, I, I loved the tournament. 2004 I didn't play because I was the injury of the, of the foot. But uh, since that moment I played every year and just was something <laughs> totally amazing for me. None more so than last year, where an epic final saw Nadal put an end to Novak Djokovic's streak of seven consecutive victories over him. It's true, no? I, know, I know that that court, uh, I don't know, have something special for me. That court, when every time when I when I visit that court, is it's like I, I am playing at home, and I feel I feel great. No, I always had a great feelings on on that court, and to beat Novak after seventh. Straight losers probably was the right place. He's achieved so much, but some are surprised when reminded Rafa is 26. I had uh, a lot of factors on my side that helped me a lot, like my uncle, like my family, like my team, that I had uh, a great team, the same team since ever. <laughs> so uh, that was was great. I have the, the right people around you that they are not afraid to, to, to tell me what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is not right. That's very, very important. No? And at the end, I always never realized that I was special. I always went day by day, trying to practice well the next day, and like this until today. It's second nature for him. He's, he's so good, and you know he's got that, that technology in his hands that it's just like so powerful and so overwhelming just to be able to generate all that pace and that spin and you know obviously it hits the court with the, the French and just bounces way up and a lot of guys it gets tiring to be able to just deal with that. That being said he's still just a, just a tough guy to beat on, on, on clay I mean just yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to beat him and for me I would just try to get into the net and pray. With a record 22 ATP World Tour Masters 1000 titles Rafa is a legend but is he already the greatest on clay? I cannot say, no, I, I, I am not the right person to say. You know, I, I, don't, I really don't know the full history of tennis. You know, a lot of, a lot of people probably have more information and knows better the tennis than me to, to say that. But uh, the only thing that I can say that that's true, that I am sure is, sure I am in, a, in, that, in that small group that probably uh, did uh, very important things on clay. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, presented by Rio, the glamour game. We're in Monaco for the Monte Carlo Rolex Masters. Plus, sitting down with Songa, we get the latest from Frenchman Joe Wilfred. And don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news. And talk with us on Facebook and Twitter. See you next week.